Well, hello and welcome to episode 48 of Retro Power Uncut and uh, another sort of busy, if uh, slightly jumbled week because we've had various people on holiday, um, uh, including me uh, and Cal for part of the week. Um, so it's, so that there's been a lot of bits and bobs of activity in all different areas, but we start in what will be our new assembly workshop. Uh, and me with a new mug. Um, we've had uh, a, number, uh, a, a batch of these uh, Retro Power branded mugs produced now, so if anybody would like one, we will shortly be listing these uh, online on our uh, online shop. So if anybody would like a rather nice Retro Power mug, you'll be able to buy them very soon. Um, so yeah, this will be our new, uh, our new assembly workshop. There'll be four bays. Uh, one there with a uh, with a ramp uh, lift in it. One here with a lift in it. There with a short uh, inspection pit, mainly for doing uh, post shakedown uh, checking work. And then a final bay at the far end, um, which is just a will just be a flat floor bay. Obviously, there's junk everywhere and building work going on. So forgive the uh, the state of things in here at the moment. We are progressing. We've now got the LED lighting up there. There's more lighting to go along the wall there. We're obviously part way through putting the services in along that side. Uh, the pit, the second pour was done yesterday, which was a bit traumatic. Uh, the concrete supplier made a bit of a boo-boo uh, and supplied the mix rather incorrectly. So we were fighting a bit of a battle there, but we fought the battle and won. Uh, so we've got the second pour of concrete in there. We've got the second pour of concrete in the uh, recovery operation of sorting out the running sand issue over there. So that's dealt with and cast in now, not going to go anywhere. So we've got the final pour to go in, which will be a fibre reinforced uh, mix which we're going to put in in here, which gives us level pads. You'll be wondering why the floor's cut out now bigger, uh, rather than just having just repairing the holes that we originally cut for the initial in-ground ramps. Uh, the issue there is that the floors in this building, this building was designed uh, and built in uh, around 1990 uh, as, a, as a cattle building. So the floors generally have a slope on them for drainage, and also they're not very flat because they were built to sort of a farm cow building standard, not an industrial building standard. So whenever we bolt anything seriously structural to the floor, we can't really trust the concrete. Now, as it is, most of the concrete here was plenty thick enough. It's always the way when you cut it up anyway. At the far end, it wasn't thick enough. So it, it, we're scratching out some of the, um, some of the uh, hardcore underneath and re recompacting that. Uh, so that we've got a uh, greater concrete depth at that end. Then we've drilled and uh, anchor, uh, resin anchored uh, rebar all the way around so that we tie the new slab in. The new slab will be classed in a, uh, cast in a um, synthetic fibre reinforced material just to give that a bit of extra crack resistance. Obviously, it'll be cast thicker. But the other thing is, because of the slope, all the levels written around everywhere, we're, we're from striking off levels from a laser level so that we can cast two level pads for the ramps and take out the undulations in the floor because there's, there's about 30 millimetres, well, 35 millimetres of variation in that floor, which we want to get rid of for when we put the, put the lifts in. Uh, the in-ground ramps are sort of over there. They're going back to the supplier, as I mentioned last week. The new, uh, we're getting two new rotary baseless two-post ramps um, from Everard Garage Equipment, which are going there and there. They're going in there. And so the pit is, well, later today, we'll be removing the anchor beams from the pit, cutting them off, cut, pull the lids off, pull this lid off here. We'll cut the welds off, take the anchor beams off so that we can get the rest of the pit. We'll dress all the top where we've got the welds, clean that up, retouch up the paint around there where the, where the beams are welded on. And then we'll put a new temporary lid back onto the pit again, ready for the last pour, because we're gonna to have to, we'll be tamping off to the edge of the pit. We'll make a stepped tamp, to tamp the concrete off around the edge of the pit, um, so that we can tamp that with just a, just a steel edge standing up very, very slightly, so that we've got uh, an edge to work from uh, in terms of a, a nice edge to the pit so that the concrete isn't trying to lay on top of the pit and chip and whatever. Uh, and we've, uh, as we pour the floor slab, obviously, we're going to fill in the channels that were dug to run the services into the in-ground ramps, which we don't need now because they, the new ones are fed overhead. Uh, and obviously, we've put the, trunk, we've put the um, da -da -da -da, ducting in to the pit there to feed the air uh, supply down and also to feed the lighting power supply down for the air and lighting uh, that's fitted in. The, the lights are already fitted in this pit. We'll I'll film that next week. The lights are already in the pit. It's all supplied, all pre-done. It's just that, obviously, we've sealed it up at the minute to avoid it getting full of concrete. So that's uh, that pretty much where we're at in here. As I say, there'll be a lot more progress. There's a heater stood in the corner, which will be going in somewhere near that end. Ah, and the other, the other key point in here to note is the, is the layout. The wall, which is currently behind camera, will be completely removed. Yeah, so this, uh, this wall here, 
will be will be completely removed. All these these uprights will go. These will put in um, uh, off the top of my head about seven years ago, six or seven years ago. This lot was put in. These weren't original to the building. Um, they will be they'll be taken out, and all this wall will come down. So this will flow into our existing assembly workshop, and the access into all these bays. If the layout seems strange, it's because the access will be from the existing unit into here. So there'll be four bays which can be pulled into this way and then the mezzanine floor that's in there will then continue back and all our part storage will be up on that mezzanine floor and then the vehicle access and further vehicle storage underneath and so then we've got four permanent assembly bays in here all of which are relatively accessible. It'll be a major step forward for us because access to working area and juggling cars on and off lifts and that sort of thing is one of our is one of our big bugbears at the moment and this is going to eliminate the bulk of that eliminate the majority of that problem so that's where we're going we're getting there another week should see pretty much completion of well it will certainly see completion of concrete work unless the concrete suppliers uh, uh, have a longer lead time than i anticipate uh, so that should see the completion of concrete work and then we'll be looking at flooring uh, we're not sure whether we're going resin or paint yet but basically we've got to finalize the flooring that's going to depend a little bit on the cure off time, drying time on the concrete then we can actually get the vehicle we're not going to be putting the ramp straight in they're they're a month away yet because of the waiting for the concrete to harden but we'll actually then be able to get using this space which then enables us to free up the space next door so that we can then do the next round of work and civil engineering which is in there where we've got to dig another big hole in the floor and concrete all of that ready for a new paint booth installation well it's new 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 used it's not a brand new paint booth we're fitting a fitting a, a new to us paint booth um, with a full floor extraction set up rather than just a centre pit extraction that we have at the moment in next door. So that will be the next bout of civil engineering. So that's about where we're at in here. So we'll have a wander through uh, and then have a look at what's actually been going on car wise rather than Bob the Builder wise. We'll uh, wander on through here. Out here, the, we're going to be moving, moving fence and gates around. This lot, which, which fe previously fenced our neighbour's area and mess off from us, will be moving back to, to give us a little uh, storage area out of sight, and then we'll have a bigger yard space. Obviously, we'll be cleaning all this up, getting the weeds killed properly and generally tidying up, and steel work for mezzanine floors will all be built into a mezzanine floor, and all, everything will be looking a lot tidier. So. And in here, uh, boring and exciting really, traumas of, uh, traumas of last week just to bring everything down to earth so it's not all uh, glitz and glamour. <laughs> Our forklift died. Uh, we've uh, blown the head gasket. It's a Caterpillar forklift. They use a Peugeot, it's like a Peugeot 504, Peugeot 505, the old um, XN1 p engine or xn1t engine but it's a, an xn1 peugeot engine with it that runs on propane um we've got one forklift that we used we've actually got another parts one that belongs to like, the farmer our landlord um which is a sort of broken one but still got a good engine in it um we were weighing up the best options at the moment we're just going to do the do the head gasket on the existing one the head gasket so a friend of mine's actually doing the uh, the work on it um, Ian Toon at TTS Truck Maintenance is doing a little bit of work for us because we just haven't got the time to do it. Um, uh, the head's away for skimming, so we'll get that back hopefully today and get the forklift back in action because we really need the forklift for doing the work next door, taking all that wall down that I've just talked about because getting that steel work down is, uh, needs, needs, needs a forklift. So, <laughs> so it's becoming pretty urgent. I don't want to keep pestering our landlord and borrowing his. So, uh, so that's one thing that's underway. And then shinier and more interesting, we've got some parts that have just literally this morning turned up for Utah, uh, the Utah Jaguar from KS Composites. Um, these are parts for the center console, uh, a bezel for the gear shifter and a uh, center console plate, which we've got to finish ready for anodizing. The, the machine finish isn't quite good enough to directly anodize. Um, so we need to do a little bit of hand finishing on that. Uh, to get that ready for anodizing and then we've got these which are the um, shackles i guess you'd call them or forks for the rear shock absorbers on utah uh, these bolt two of these bolt into the existing um, shock absorber mounts in the turrets in the car if you like they're a very small turret in the back of the car two of these bolt into those two of these bolt into the seats on the axle and they act to convert the car to a, a coilover setup on the back um, so yeah, we've we've just had those made there back, so they'll be off for anodizing next, uh, and then we've we've done those so that we can use the standard Jaguar 
type uh, bush top and bottom so it will use like a jaguar xj type bush top and bottom bill stein are making the um, dampers for the car the, the coilover units for it so we're, we're awaiting bill stein on those but in the meantime we've got those done that's all done so it's another batch once the final fettling's done on this and that actually that's being polished but that once the final fettling's been done on this then these can go off as another batch uh, for anodizing so that's about where we're at in here. I think, yeah, boxes of mugs. <laughs> we'll carry on through and go into the workshop and have a little look in there. So in here, we have been progressing a variety of things. A little bit more on the Mustang this week. Uh, I'm going to stand somewhere where I can't. I'm, I'll, I'll stand here. Am I far enough back? No, a bit further back. I'll stand here. There we go. Yeah, a little bit more on Mustang this week. Um, we John's been busy on the. He's installed the wiper mechanism, the wiper motor. He's also installed the heater box, built all that up, sorted out various uh, various items to do with the heater box, gasketing, pipe work. Got all that installed. Uh, he's also been working on finishing off some bits to do with the steering column and I'm now forgetting the various things that John's been working on. What else have you done, John? I've already forgotten now. You've done, you've done heater box. Uh, he, rear he, ah, yes, rear, rear dampers, yes. Yeah. Sorting out, also sorting out getting the uh, rear dampers fitted, getting the upper and lower mounts sorted for those as well. So things are progressing nicely on, uh, on Mustang. That's coming together quite well now. It's starting to resemble more of a car at this stage. Uh, in the meantime, there's various bits been happening on Utah as well. Primarily, uh, James has rebuilt the steering column for that. Uh, that was typical with a Mark II Jag steering column, very old and very worn out. So most of the components were worn on it. So he's now rebushed that. It's been, it's been prepped, blasted and painted. Um, the slip ring has been refurbished for the, uh, for the uh, horn control. The switch gear has been sorted out and the switch gear mounts are sorted out on that now. So that's all good. Uh, and the steering, he's got a new um, steering wheel locking uh, ring boss, whatever you <laughs> refer to that as. He's got a new, 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 new center boss for it because the old ones, they were, they were sort of a cast baker like with the steel embedded in it, not really refurbishable, cracked. And I mean, we've got several kicking around and none of them were really any use. So he's, uh, so he's bought a new one, which is actually really nicely made. So that was good. So yeah, the steering column is now all ready to fit. The steering wheel, I believe, is ready to fit. Um, so yeah, that's some progress there. And they're literally currently, as we're talking, bonding the door glass into the uh, runners that sit on the, I can't th the window channels. I'll get the terminology right. They're bonding the uh, door glazing into the window channels that sit on the uh, on the window lift mechanisms. So they're just being they're being glued in as we speak on camera. No pressure. So, <laughs> but that all seems to be going all right. Uh, Mercedes W108 Kaiser 1's in for a little bit of maintenance, nothing too serious on that. Um, and then if I wander this way and just make Jamie's life difficult again probably, we'll wander to here. Manta, Clive's been doing uh, a reasonable amount of work on Manta, he's been getting the oil cooler plumbing finalised, he's been working on making some um, kick panels for to mount speakers in the footwells, uh, the initial work on that anyway, and then he's been working on the rear bulkhead, getting a, the, there were various changes along the route of this Manta in terms of um, what was going to happen originally, the car was going to have a rear seat. Uh, the owner's changed his mind and decided he doesn't want rear seats in it now, so he wants that bulkheading. Ideally, we would have dealt with that at the metalwork stage and put suitable mounting in for the bulkhead at the metalwork stage. We couldn't because that wasn't on, that wasn't on the uh, order of priorities at that stage because originally it was going to have seats. But anyway, we've, we've worked around that and Clive's got the, the main section of the rear bulkhead made up now, templated, all cut and, and made and fitted. So the next stage, we've got to do the lower bit. Uh, he's just doing a few other jobs on the car while he's... Uh, while we're waiting to uh, finalise the design of the lower part of the bulkhead and I need to remember to order some material which I've forgotten so I need to do that as well. So I think that's about where we're at with the Manta. I'll fly on through to the fabrication workshop where a variety of things have been going on. Again we're a bit short on manpower this week. We uh, Scott's on holiday and uh, Tom's currently off uh, poorly so we, uh, we're, 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 we're quite empty in here at the moment. Stu's on his own in here and it's very quiet. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go this way, Stu. <laughs> I'll let you through. Stu's bustling about. 
Yeah, Tom's been working on Land Cruiser uh, before he was off. Before he was off, uh, he's been working on sorting out the floors. Scott was working on it as well, doing some repair sections to the inner sills and various things. But Scott's been off since Scott's been off as of the end of last week, so he was only here Friday, subsequent to the last video. So he was just finishing off some repairs on the pillars uh, and the inner sills while Tom started templating the floors. Tom's now templated both the floors made those, uh, made a press tool, I believe, yeah, he's made a press tool and pressed the reinforcing sections into the floors. Uh, and he was then working, prior to going away, prior to being off, he was templating up the section for the fuel tank to drop through the floor and trying to work out the design for the fuel tank. It's actually quite, it's a little bit more complicated than we choose it to be, but it, that's such is life, that's how it is. Uh, so he's designing the recesses to go into the floors for the fuel tanks to sit in. As I mentioned before, we're having like a saddle tank arrangement in the car. Uh, and it, it, we've got to make the recesses in the floor for that to sit into. So that's the next stage. He's pretty much templated it up, that up. He was working out his folds uh, at the point he, uh, at the point he uh, went off poorly. So next week, we should be able to get the floors finished and get the fuel tank recesses finished in that, and you'll be able to see less hole in the middle of the vehicle and more metal. Moving on from that, the Jaguar XJC if I nestle my way over here slightly, I'm probably going to get in Stu's way. I'll go here. Um, Stu's literally working on this as we speak. Uh, he's been fabricating. You may recall from last week, we talked about changing this over to running the um, GM, the complete GM management system, which was great. A little spin-off problem with that was that the existing air filter setup that we were using will then no longer work because we need to be able to get the airflow meter in and the airflow meter needs to be fitted in the correct orientation relative to the tube work around it and on a relatively straight section of tube work and various other caveats to do with fitting an airflow meter, all of which meant that we had to completely revise the air intake system. Now, Stu's been busy on that and we now have an air intake system which by necessity of its of the space it has to fit into has ended up being a reasonably complicated affair but that is just how these things work out um, we've we've de designed this now to take four separate small k m filters to get us the correct filter area in the co correct intake uh, cross-sectional area for the engine uh, but still fit in under the bonnet line, which, as you'll know with these cars, is extremely low. And to get a, a large radiator in, which obviously was already in the car, dictates the space between the bonnet and the top of the radiator, which is where we've got to get that cold air feed in through. There's nowhere else to get the cold air feed in. So that, that design has worked out quite well. It's basically built into the, the original um, slam panel that holds the, the top of the radiator. The, we've built the air intake system into that slam panel, but it's, it's a pretty tight installation. But we've pretty much got it done now. We're close to the stage of being able to get those parts painted, get them back on the car. And then I think we're pretty much there with the, uh, with the revised setup for the, for the engine management. So that'll be nice, because it's a really nice car, this. It's, uh, as I mentioned last week, we, we have some more in the pipeline as well. So it'll be, it'll be nice, to, uh, nice to get this one finalized and look forward to some, some further ones. And then wandering, wandering on through, I'll just slide this little box out of the way. We have Chevette, where Gaz has been busy in the paint booth, painting the panels for this this week. Uh, he's been finalizing the prep and getting all the panel work painted. So now we've got doors, wings, uh, boot, and I think side skirts painted. And we've just got, he's just got the bonnet and the front bumper to still to paint. Cause you get to the point where there's too much in the booth. You can't paint at all a full panel set in there in one go. Cause it just ends up being sort of mission impossible in there. You're trying to dance around things. And at some point something's going to end up getting an airline dragged across it. So, so he's, uh, he's painted the panels in two batches. He's still got to finish the second, just paint the second batch. Although they're, they're prepped and ready to go. So yeah, he's just, uh, he's literally just been putting the doors on. But yeah, really happy with the paint finish. We've, uh, we've, just, we've just done a, a paint gun upgrade, which I don't know whether we've mentioned on, on previous episodes, but we've just, uh, we've just done an upgrade and I've now just forgotten it's, what is it, it's an Iwata? Yeah, Iwata WS400 Pro, I think, uh, gun, which we're, we're really happy with. We've used SATA guns for a long time. We're very happy with those. But we, uh, we had an issue with the SATA, and while we were waiting for the repair on that, we decided it, uh, it didn't, uh, it, it, had, it had earned its keep. It, we've had it for quite a few years, the SATA gun we were using, and uh, we've had it for quite a few years, and decided that we were probably due, probably due a bit of an upgrade and had a little uh, play with, a, with an, one of those uh, Iwatas, which I've just uh, completely forgotten the name of again. 
in already, but we had a we had a play with that, and we're very happy with the demo one. So we've we've bought one of those now, and Gaz is Gaz is really happy with that. And the, I mean, the finish on this has come out uh, incredibly good. What's the, what lack has this done in now? This uh, is Max Mayer 320, uh, Max Mayer 320 high solids, yeah. ultra high solids. Yeah, so it's, it's a Max Mayer lacquer that we've used on this. A Mac, Max Mayer 320 ultra high solids lacquer. Um, and we're really happy with that. The finish is absolutely perfect. We're really, it's, as, it's as good as it's likely to. In the real world, where people show all sorts of shiny pictures of getting their perfect reflection in lacquer in a paint booth, it's easy to do that. But looking at this now, I can say I don't think you would get a better finish out of a gun. I don't think you would. I think you would struggle to get much better than this. It's, uh, it looks extremely good. So we're really happy with that setup. And yeah, get the final panels finished. And we're pretty much there on on paint for the Chevette, and it's going to be through to assembly hall and start getting a few significant bits bolted together so i think that probably ra rounds things ah oh, yes yeah, sorry yes yeah it's, it's just as well jamie's here to remind me about things because i have a sieve for a brain i'm going to stand at the front which is jamie will cut a clip of this in anyway but i'm going to stand near it anyway just to just to delight in the uh, in the shine coming off it but yes of course this the, the other significant uh, thing this week is the, is this car returning from Simpson Exhausts. Um, I, was, I, I hadn't actually seen this since it had come back, but yes, uh, Matt Simpson's done his usual work, uh, as always, and done an absolutely beautiful job of uh, the exhaust manifold and system. And yeah, it, uh, <laughs> the quality speaks a, speaks a thousand words. You know, it, it, uh, there's no point me uh, going any further. I'll just let the pictures do the talking. Absolutely superb job. Can't recommend them enough, Simpson Race Exhausts. And on that note, until next time, we shall see you again.